Hello, this is Pick, and welcome to this guide for the Pedestals mod. Pedestals is a powerful mod focused on automation and item logistics, and fluid logistics, energy logistics, etc. However, it can be quite the confusing mod, as there are lots of things that people don't really find intuitive. So that's why I'm here to explain it to you. To get started, we have the titular pedestal, as well as some various tools, and a way of activating redstone. The pedestal itself is a block, and you can place it down anywhere you'd like. The simplest thing you can do is move items from one pedestal to another. So, let's just get a stack of some item. How about jungle saplings? Right click a pedestal to put the items in your hand on it. This moves things into the pedestal's inventory. But how do we move it from one pedestal to another? That's where the linking tool comes in. Shift right click the pedestal with the linking tool and it will save it. And then shift right click the pedestal you want to send from. So the regular linking tool goes from receiver to sender. The items start to flow at the default rate of 4 items per transfer. And now if we were to set up another set of pedestals, say with this cooked rabbit, and shift right click the air with the linking tool, it'll turn into the backwards linking tool. This simply allows you to connect things in the opposite direction from sender to receiver. To disable a pedestal, give it a redstone signal. This applies to most pedestal functions. Pedestals can be dyed by holding a die in your offhand and right clicking on the pedestal. This will completely overwrite the color the pedestal previously had. Colors are purely cosmetic, however they aid in organization, telling you what line is sending what item, fluid, or energy. Carrying dyes around in your inventory is very cluttery. You can fix this by making a color applicator. Shift right click while holding the color applicator to save the color of that pedestal. You can then right click to apply that color to any other pedestal. Shift right click the air to change the color that the color applicator has selected. It will cycle through all of the options you have saved. While I prefer keeping all of my color lines separated, or at least having them sending and receiving to only that of the same color, pedestals will send to each other regardless of what the color is. A uh, note is that if I say shift right click, I apologize, technically sneak right click or crouch right click is the correct term. Know that all of those phrases mean the same thing, regardless of if you've rebound shift to something else. Do whatever you need to to crouch. Pedestals are not restricted to one input and one output. You can link a pedestal to multiple outputs or have it received from multiple inputs. However, it will prefer to send things to the first pedestal you linked it to and it won't send to another pedestal until that inventory is full. You can still use this to set up large-scale distribution of a particular item or fluid or power. Uh, I ended up forgetting about this feature, but I suppose I should just record something about it real quick right now. If you right-click with the linking tool on a pedestal, not shift right-click, just regular right-click, it'll show the range that the pedestal can link to, and it'll even show the destination pedestals that it's currently sending to. Likewise, I'm nowhere near talking about upgrades yet, but you can do the same thing with the upgrade tool to view the upgrades visual range and see where it's currently working. How do we get items from one drawer to the other? This works with most regular inventories. I can put an import upgrade in my offhand and right click the pedestal to put that import upgrade on the pedestal. Now the pedestal's upgraded to import from the inventory it's attached to. That means the one underneath it. It'll suck all the items out of the inventory and put it in its internal inventory. Then we can send it over to the other pedestal and use an export upgrade to distribute the items into that inventory below it. To remove an upgrade, hold the upgrade tool in your offhand and left click the pedestal. That will put the upgrade into your inventory. So, if we were to link these pedestals together, we can see that the importing pedestal is sending to the exporting pedestal, and the exporting pedestal is sending the items into the drawer below it. This general format works for all types of transfer, as long as the target inventories can handle such a thing being transferred, of course. For example, if I were to set up some tanks and put some lava in one, I can use the fluid version of the exporter, that's gotten by putting the upgrade in your offhand and shift right clicking the air with it, and then put that in, and it'll suck up the lava, I send it over to the other one, and it'll put the lava in the other tank. Each pedestal has an internal inventory for all types of the things it can transfer. 
And once again, this works for energy. So what you do is you just use the energy version of the importer and then the energy version of the exporter and it'll send energy from one side to the other. Something to note is that energy is sent in bursts. Well, everything is sent in a burst, so to speak. This is to make contrast to typical pipes and cables, which send maybe one millibucket at a time at a much faster rate. Meanwhile, pedestals send 5,000 energy at the default rate from one inventory to the other. The importer and exporter aren't the only way to put things in or out of pedestals, though. All other forms of item pulling and pushing work as well. What's more is that these methods are not dependent on the face the pedestal is on. You can hopper in items, pipe in fluids, take them out, put them in. You can even send multiple types of things through one line of pedestals if you so desire. You also aren't restricted as to which block face you put a pedestal on. You could attach it to the side or bottom of a block if you'd like. Everything is just rotated so it works exactly the same as it would otherwise. Of course, that means that the block the pedestal is sitting on is the one it will interact with. Just make sure you're careful as to where you're sending things. If you break a pedestal, that entire line is going to be broken, so you gotta take that into account when moving things around. Oh no, I have this whole chest full of dirt and beacons. I can't believe the stupid beacons are contaminating my lovely dirt. I can't contaminate my hands with the stupid beacons though. I'll have to transfer these things using pedestals. Of course, as per usual, you'll want to place a pedestal on each of your target inventories. Then we're going to use something called an item filter. This is going to, well, filter the items that can go into the pedestal. To set this filter up, simply place down an inventory, it could be a pedestal, could be a chest, whatever, and place the items you want to filter inside the pedestal or chest or whatever. Shift right click the inventory with the item filter in your off hand and it will set the filter to that item. Shift right click the air with the filter in your off hand to make it cycle through the different types of things it can transport. If you're using fluids you'll want to filter it using a bucket of that fluid. A regular right click with the filter in hand will change it from whitelist to blacklist. Of course whitelist means allow, blacklist means deny. A whole manner of operations are affected by the filter, I'll discuss them when they become relevant. But for now, you can see that the export upgrade is only taking dirt out of that chest and it is safely putting the dirt away from those horrible beacons into that other chest. Now, when I take this upgrade tool and I shift right click it, I can change it between its different modes. It has a mode that's different for each of the general types of things that you might have. If I wanted to remove a filter, I would just switch to the filter tool and offhand left click it. Now, I have all of these stone pickaxes in my inventory. If I put them in this chest, I want to make sure that only a stone pickaxe that has been used exactly four times and only has the efficiency to enchantment is going to be taken out and sent to this other chest. To accomplish this, I can use an item stack filter. Set the filter like you would the regular item filter, except now it takes respect to the enchantments and durability on the pickaxe. None of the other pickaxes, regardless of enchantments or durability matching, will go through. Now, instead of just picking one specific pickaxe, I'd like to sort them by having a bunch of different pickaxes. Let's say I wanted to sort them by durability. I only want to have ones that are greater than or equal to the one I set with that four durability to go through. The durability filter set to whitelist will accomplish this. It will accept all stone pickaxes, so long as they are both stone pickaxes and have a durability of at least 127, and allow them to be sent through the pedestals. If you want to do the opposite, you could have it be on blacklist, and that will make it so only pickaxes of 127 or lower get sent through. So, to recap, greater than or equal to is whitelist, less than or equal to is blacklist, and equal is just item stack. Okay, time to sort things based off of if they're enchanted or not. The is enchanted filter helps with this. The pedestal only takes items out if they are enchanted and it leaves them if they are not enchanted. Fairly straightforward. The enchanted count filter will determine the number of enchantments on an item. Setting it is a little weird. What you have to do is place items in the inventory and the total sum of the number of enchantments on each of those items is the number of enchantments that the filter counts. So if I put two different pickaxes with one enchantment each on it, the sum is two. It doesn't matter if they're the same enchantment or not. You could have also put in one item with two enchantments. 
So if I put all of my pickaxes back in the input, you'll see that only the pickaxe with efficiency and unbreaking gets sent through. Now for something much simpler. The exact enchantment filter simply filters for the exact enchantment. If I filter for efficiency 2, it will only send in pickaxes that have exactly efficiency 2 and nothing else. If it has unbreaking 2, it won't go through. If it's unenchanted, it won't go through. And if it has only efficiency 1, it also will not go through. Perhaps this would be useful for some type of auto enchanter where you want only a certain type of pickaxe to go through or something, I don't know. Let's say instead of looking for specific enchantments, I was just looking for a specific type of enchantment, say unbreaking. I can do that by setting a fuzzy enchanting filter onto a pickaxe with unbreaking on it, and only unbreaking. Now, regardless of the level of the unbreaking enchantment, all unbreaking pickaxes get sent from one chest to the other. If I were to change the filter to a pickaxe that has both efficiency and unbreaking on it, either enchant will get sent through. All of the efficiency, unbreaking, or both will get sent, but nothing that's not in that list, obviously. The is food filter is next. If you can eat it, it goes through. If you can't eat it, it doesn't go through, unless you switch it to blacklist. Note that it has to be something that you can eat in your inventory regularly. This means that cakes do not count under this tag even though you can eat them after you place them on the ground. Wood planks, rails, batteries, all not food. I know, you might be disappointed to hear that. The mod filter is a way of filtering items by the mod it's from. You can set it to multiple items for multiple mods if you'd like. But, as you can see, when I put all of these items in the chest, I've set the filter to Vanilla Minecraft, so only items from Vanilla Minecraft will get sent through. Note that sometimes items are replaced as to what mod they're from. For example, Apotheosis overwrites the anvil, saying it's from Apotheosis rather than vanilla. It is still a vanilla block as it's the vanilla anvil, so it goes through the vanilla filter. The restricted filter sets a stack size limit on the filter so that no more than the number of items on the filter is allowed on that pedestal. Note that this explicitly applies to the pedestal not the inventory it is attached to. So, if I were to set the filter to a 4 pulverized cobblestone, it will allow 4 of any item to get put onto that pedestal. It will not fill up the pedestal to 64, but it will allow stuff to get exported into the chest below. So, you'd have to make sure that there isn't an inventory for things to get sent into if you want the stack limiting to work like that. If you want to set up the filter for fluids, it will count the number of items in millibuckets, so you need a thousand items to set a filter of one bucket. Basically the same with RF slash FE slash whatever. The tag filter works a little differently than you might expect. You can't just have it whitelist to any old item. What you'll need instead is the item called the tag getter. Put that in your main hand and an item you want to take tags from in your off hand. This will copy all of that item's tags onto the tag getter. You then right click with the tag getter to cycle through the possible tags from that item you took. Let's say from emeralds I want to take the gems tag and only have gems go through. Then I place that on an inventory and then set the tag filter to that tag getter. Now it will only take the stuff that follows that forged gems tag. So, it'll leave gold and redstone behind, but amethyst, emerald, and diamond all get sent through. There's a separate tag filter for machines. Machines means any pedestal upgrade that allows it to craft something. I'll get into those later in the video, but the discussion of the tag filter is simply that it will whitelist its what ingredients it's allowed to take. I've pre-filtered this to forge cobblestone, so the only thing it's allowed to process is stuff with the forge cobblestone tag. It applies to the input, not the output. I don't quite know if the beef actually goes through the regular furnace, but regular stone definitely does. So it's only going to process the cobblestone and will leave the smooth stone in the chest. The reason this matters is that obviously a normal filter prevents what's allowed on the pedestal. In this case, it's allowing something that's not supposed to be in the filter because that's the product and that's where it goes. I don't need to make a whole clip out of this, so I'm just going to say that the other machine filters operate in the same way as their normal counterparts just for machines. If a pedestal's full of a fluid or energy, it's obviously not going to drop it as an item. Instead, it drops as a packet of whatever that fluid was, or an energy packet. 
When the timer goes up, the fluid that's inside will spill out and make a mess into the world, or you'll get struck by lightning if it was RF. We're not quite done talking about logistics, though. There are a few augments that alter how the pedestals function. The round robin augment makes the pedestals with different destinations alternate between them, splitting the stacks evenly. Note that this only works from sender to receiver, not the other way around. It will also skip a pedestal if it can't send to that destination. The particle augment makes it so that particles don't display. You noticed those glyphs before in the previous clip, well now they're not there. Good for helping cut back on particle derived lag. Next is the Collision Effect Augment. Uh, sorry about this, I know this is unprofessional, but uh, I don't know what this does. I don't understand what the wiki is trying to tell me. Uh, MoMaster, if you're in the comments, please uh, elaborate on what this does. In any case, now we have the Transfer Toggle Augment. Like any other thing, you shift right click to cycle through all of the different types of transfer and then you right click without shifting to change whether it's on or off. It basically just enables and disables the transfer. Last up on the topic of augments, we have all of the transfer related augments. Each increases a particular pedestal property, but only happens between pedestals. You understand that? Between pedestals, not inventories. Capacity increases the size of items transferred between them, so instead of four, it transfers eight. Storage increases the pedestal storage capacity. Speed decreases the amount of time between transfers. And range increases the range that the pedestals can transfer between. Now, the mod pack I'm using is FTB Skies Expert, so some of the values are changed from the default, just keep that in mind. Each type of augment also has its own tool, you can cycle through them, and that's how you extract augments from pedestals. A pedestal manifest is a way to determine the stats of a given pedestal. It will tell you information about the augments you have installed and what it's capable of transferring. Shift right click a pedestal with it in your hand, regular or off both work, and it will get you information about that pedestal you clicked on. This is just for aesthetics, but you can also put a pedestal through the stone cutter and have different designs for it. There are three alternate designs available, and it'll render the items in a different location on each. The last thing to go over before the lightning round of upgrades is going to be work areas. These are the blue colored cards, and there are three types that are mainly used for upgrades to tell it what to do and where to work. The first of these is the work area. This will define the volume in which the particular upgrade is going to do its job. If I were to put down two blocks and click on each of them, it will make an area or a volume between those blocks. This means that the entire rectangle I just selected is included in the selection. Right click on the air to clear the card. Next we have the work locations. It functions similarly to the work area, except it picks specific block coordinates instead of a particular area. It doesn't fill them in. You can click around wherever you'd like and it'll add that coordinate to where the pedestal is going to work. Useful for some specific upgrades. Last is the pedestal locations card. It doesn't quite work right now because I'm not using it with the upgrade it's intended to work with. Keep it in mind for later, you shift right click a pedestal to store its location, and then we're gonna see how that works when I get to that upgrade. It's time for the mega upgrade section. I'm going to go through each of the upgrades as that's basically the only thing left to cover. I'll be discussing their functions and requirements. Note that this may vary from pack to pack. Sky's Expert is much stricter than most other packs of course. So make sure you check as to whether the pedestal needs energy or not or something. First up, as previously discussed, importers and exporters. Importers pull items out of inventories into the pedestal. Exporters take items on the pedestal and push them into inventories. This also works for fluids and power. Next up is the magnet upgrade. It will require a work area to function. Define its work area and that's where it will pick up items from the world from. While it will pick up items, it will not deposit them into inventories by itself. You'll need to send it to another pedestal with an exporter in order to do that, or use some type of piping network. The breaker upgrade will break blocks in the locations that you tell it to. There's a chance you might need to give it a tool. If you do, just make sure you hold the tool in your offhand and insert it into the pedestal like that. You can also overwrite the basic generic tool that it starts with if possible. When pedestals break blocks, it takes enchantments from the tool into effect. So, if you were to use a Silk Touch enchanted pickaxe, it would mine with Silk Touch. 
It also doesn't pick up items, so you'll need a magnet upgrade or something to deal with that. Sometimes pedestal upgrades don't work in claimed chunks. You'll need to set your chunks to allow fake players to work in them. It's in the settings. The placer upgrade allows blocks to be placed down. Give it a work area that is the place you wanted to place blocks. You might have to place a block down, right click that block and then break it in order to have the work area be set properly. Put some blocks in the pedestal inventory and it will place them down. Make sure you allow fake players to place blocks in your chunk claims. The filler upgrade is like the placer upgrade except it fills a volume instead of a single block or a few designated blocks. You can right click on the corners to define what edges you want it to be set to. It might need power to operate. If it does, just give it some power, of course. And then a couple blocks at a time, it'll start filling in that space. Once again, make sure that you can have fake players place blocks in your chunks. The quarry upgrade, much like its name suggests, is the opposite of the filler upgrade. It will break blocks in a designated area. However, it has a few more complications. Like the filler, it requires power. However, it also requires a tool and experience. To put a tool on the pedestal, you can put it in your offhand and right click it. This will determine what tool it will use to mine with. The tool will be used with its enchantments on it, so if you have a fortune pickaxe, it will respect that fortune when it mines the blocks. Same goes for silk touch, auto smelt, and other related block breaking related enchantments. I'll explain more about this later, but you need something like an unbottler upgrade to get experience specific to what the pedestal can use. This is not liquid experience, this is a specific type of experience that pedestals transfer. Once again, make sure that fake players are allowed to break blocks in your claims. Also note that it has to be the right tool for the job or it might not work. Depends on the mod pack though. It will drop the blocks on the ground next to the pedestal. You'll need something like a magnet upgrade to pick them up. Next up is the chopper upgrade. It's going to need a tool, a work area, and sometimes power. You need to make sure that the entire tree is within the range of the pedestal or it won't work. Or at least all of the wood, since if you have some type of fast leaf decay, the leaves will just decay on their own. Also, once again, make sure that fake players are allowed to break blocks within your chunks. My recommendation with this one is to have a limiter on how high your trees can grow. Then all you need to do is make a tree that only grows vertically, like say a spruce tree, or I guess if you limit a titan oak tree sometimes. Then you can set the work area to only be within the boundary of the dirt and the roof above it. This will make sure that it can save time and only have to break logs. Now for a trio of upgrades that work together. We have the planter, the harvester, and the fertilizer. You'll want all of them to work in the same area, and if you stack work cards, you can have all of them get set to the coordinates at the same time. Make sure you have fake players allowed to interact with your claim chunks, please. And make sure to set the area to where the seeds are going to be, not the farmland. I've also had issues when the pedestals for the planter and harvester were on the same Y level as the seeds, so I put one above and one below. These pedestals are so strong that they even work underwater. In any case, you're gonna need some power for these things probably, as well as a tool. Remember that tools work with their enchantments, so the harvester can use fortune to get more seeds from wheat and other crops. The fertilizer works without bone meal, but it is slower. If you give it bone meal, it'll work much quicker. You can also upgrade the harvester to gentle harvest. This means that you won't have to have the planter at all. Otherwise, you're going to want to route the seeds back to the planter so that it has seeds to plant. Next up is the hive harvester. This will allow you to harvest from beehives in the area. All you need to do is supply it with shears and a work area and maybe some energy, and it'll shear it for you. Again, you'll need to have a way of picking up the items, and probably allow it to interact with your chunks as a fake player, like everything else. It's worth noting that it will anger the bees when it harvests, so you'll want to put a campfire under it so that doesn't happen. The void upgrade voids any items that go on the pedestal. Not much more to it than that. The recycler upgrade takes items from an inventory below it and disenchants them. It also produces experience that goes into the pedestal itself. This is one of the ways of producing experience. I think it might also recycle some items into nugget form, but... I don't know if that's possible because it's not enabled in this pack via regular recipes anyway. It's a disenchanter. 
The fluid converter upgrade takes certain fluids and converts them into items, energy, or experience, depending on what it is. If you wanted to convert your liquid experience into pedestal experience, this would be a good way of doing it. As you can see, it also handles things like concrete and honey, if the mods you have allow that to happen. The dropper upgrade will drop items at a designated location. Note that it does not drop items above the block you clicked, it drops it in the space you clicked it at. So, you'll have to click on the block, then remove it, and then that space that's now empty is where it will drop the item on the ground. If it has different locations that it can send something to, it will sequentially go through each of them in a round-robin format. So, to clarify, place the block area where you want it to drop, then you have to break the block, and that's where it will drop, not on top. The pump upgrade will take fluids in the area it's working from and import them into the pedestal. You can then pipe them out with some other type of pipe if you'd wish. If you want a simple water pump, you only really need to have it pull from one block as long as it will automatically be refilled. You'll need to make sure that it goes through the entire area that it's trying to pump from as it's not a smart pump like some other mods pumps that will just automatically find fluid blocks to pull. The drain upgrade will automatically place fluids into the world. It's basically the opposite of the pump upgrade. Like its brother, it also needs an area to work in. It will also require power. The shearing and milking upgrades, as the names suggest, shear and milk sheep and cows respectively. Simply ensure that they are within the designated work area, and it will drop their drops on the mob. Note that you will need to give shears to the shearing upgrade and buckets to the milking upgrade in order for them to do their jobs. It will drop buckets of milk. Also, the buckets go on in the pedestal's inventory instead of the tool inventory, so just be aware of that. The breeder upgrade will breed animals in the area so long as it has items in its inventory to breed them with. You know, wheat for cows and sheep, etc. Some mods do also have a particular threshold to which they stop breeding animals. I don't know if this mod has one, but if it stops working for some reason based off of animal count, then there's your answer. The attacker upgrade is capable of attacking mobs within its work area. That includes you, by the way. It might require energy to operate, and it will take the enchantments from the sword you're using to kill stuff with. With a regular stone sword, it will only do the base damage of the stone sword, but with a diamond sword that has high levels of enchantments, it will both almost one-shot the mobs, and it will even get looting with some insane degree, depending on what mods you have installed that let you go beyond looting 3. The fan upgrade pushes mobs around. It by default does not require energy to operate. The direction in which it pushes a mob is opposite of the face that it's sitting on. For example, if the pedestal is on the top of a block, meaning that it's sitting on the ground, it will push mobs upward. If the pedestal is on the west face of a block, it will push the mobs west, etc. The bottler and unbottler are a pair of machines that do exactly what it says on the tin. You put in pedestal with an unbottler upgrade, underneath it you put an inventory, and you put in something with a fluid in it and it will unbottle it, or something like experience. Then you can send that fluid or experience or whatever into the bottler, put some empty bottles in the inventory it's attached to, and it'll turn those into bottles of fluid. If you want to stop something like bottles from being sent to your bottler, you just have to use an item filter with the blacklist. Remember the bottler and unbottler? Meet the packager and unpackager. Take a wild guess what they do. Well, I guess it's not immediately obvious, but it turns things into a package of a fluid or energy or whatever. It triggers every time the pedestal's inventory fills with a particular type of something. That gets turned into an item, and that goes on the pedestal, and you can send it elsewhere as an item if you really want. Note that these are stable, unlike the ones you get from when you break a pedestal, so they won't automatically discharge and cause a giant mess. Now, let's talk about the crafter upgrade. This is one of the two upgrades in which we make use of that pedestal locations card. To set this up, I'd recommend setting up nine pedestals in a crafting grid formation. That's a 3x3 square. It would work not in formation, but obviously it's much easier to keep track of things when they're a square formation. To set up the pedestal location card, simply right-click on every pedestal, and then put in your offhand and put it in the crafter upgrade. Just by putting those 9 in, you'll make sure that it crafts with that crafting grid. 
If you don't put a filter into the pedestal with the crafting upgrade, it's going to craft whatever the first thing it sees is. If you do filter it, it will make sure that it only crafts the items that you've put onto the whitelist. It takes up a bit of space, but in this pack at least, it doesn't require power, so it's easy to set up for some early auto crafting. The modification infusion upgrade allows for upgrading of various pedestal upgrades. Each particular upgrade has its own recipe in JEI. I'm using the same work area as I just used for the crafting upgrade, as you'll also want an order mattering array of 3x3 pedestals. It's just the easiest way to keep track of it. To upgrade an upgrade, you simply have to put it in the chest underneath the modification infusion pedestal. Then, once you put the designated recipe for upgrade on the nine pedestals outside, it will infuse that upgrade with the upgraded infusion whatever. In this case, I upgraded the speed on an importer. There are upgrades for various things, including gentle harvest for the harvester and such. Check JEI for the full list. The Furnace, Smoker, and Blast Furnace upgrades all parrot their blocky counterparts, including their varying processing times. Simply place each on an inventory, provide the pedestal with energy, and it will take inputs from the inventory it's attached to and put them in the pedestal inventory itself. Should you want to make them faster, you can always upgrade them. Lastly, we have the Material Generator. This simulates breaking a block from the block that's under it, there are recipes in JEI telling you what you'll get. Like other upgrades, it's responsive to the tools enchantments that you give it. If I were to put this on chiseled sandstone, what it's supposed to generate is sand. This will be the case if I were to use a regular pickaxe, but if I were to use an auto smell pickaxe, it would make glass, and if I were to use a hammer, it would make dust. It might also have an experience requirement. You can get that by looking at what I talked about with the fluid converter upgrade or some other upgrades. Again, it's XP in the pedestal, not liquid experience the fluid. One last thing worth noting is that the block breaking happens simulated based off what you get if you break it with the pickaxe. What I mean by this is that if you have a mod that changes what a block makes when it breaks, say andesite, it will make cobbled andesite instead. This is the case in Sky's Expert. To circumvent this, if you have some form of auto smelting in your pack, say Cyclic's Enchantment or Elemental Craft's Fire Infusion, you can get around this. You don't necessarily need the right tool for the job, but the tool does have to be generally capable of breaking the block. So yeah, you can break sand with a pickaxe normally, but, but you can't break diamond ore with a fortune shovel. Also, Silk Touch works for getting rid of unwanted byproducts, like flint from gravel. Though you can also filter the pedestal to gravel and it will prevent it from picking up any flint. So that covers just about everything. If you have any questions for things I didn't necessarily mention or things that are for specific use cases you want me to go over, feel free to ask me in the comments. I hope this explains this great but not great documented mod. The wiki is okay, but I think this video covered just about everything, right? So with that, thank you for watching. This has been Pick, I'm glad to have seen you, and I hope to see you again.